What is the Harley Davidson CAN bus system? I'll tell you all about it inside. Revelator L. Hello, welcome to Revelator Health. Hope you enjoy the channel and the series of videos. Please like, share, subscribe, leave loads of comments below. Check out the website revelatorhealth.com and the links in the description too. So in this video, I'm talking about the CAN bus system uh, on your Harley Davidson. What is it? Well, basically, it is a communication system uh, on your bike. Now, many people have heard of OBD, onboard diagnostics, and OBD2 readers, where you can read fault codes, you can plug it into your car, and it looks like a little SCART lead uh, connector. Plug it into your car, and you can read all sorts of things like that. The CAN bus system is a similar kind of communication network. It's a local area network on your bike. And basically what it does, it allows communication between the, the different components, electrical components uh, on your bike. Just as the human body has the brain, internal organs, and all the other sensory parts, uh, information is sent from the brain uh, to those parts and then back again. Also, uh, individual parts within your body communicate with other parts of the body as well. It's exactly the same here. Now, how is it achieved? Uh, basically, it has a wiring system all over the bike and it's two wires, if you like. Uh, they are twined together and they run between the different components. So it's between your uh, electronic control module, the ECM, the body control module, BCM, instrument module, ABS module, the sensors on the bike, all, all those kind of things. Now, uh, what happens is that um, data is sent uh, along this wiring uh, to and fro. Now, it could either be an interrogation uh, signal or it can either be a uh, supply signal. Okay, so there are basically eight bits of information that are sent. So the first thing is called an SOF, which is the start of frame. The next bit is CAN ID, and that's basically like a priority, and it's saying like, is this an RPM message? Is this a temperature message? Next thing is an RTR, remote transmission request, and basically, is this an interrogation? The next thing is control. Basically, that's the length of the data. That's the guts of the, um, the message. The next thing is cyclic redundancy check, the CRC, and that's basically checking the, the uh, integrity of the uh, control message. The next is the ACK, and that checks the process uh, of the CRC, making sure that the double check, triple check of that message is working correctly. And the last thing is the EOF, which is the end of frame or the end of message. Now, each time uh, data is sent backwards and forwards, uh, it has to go along the wire. Now, the wiring has its own impedance and its own resistance. And right at the end of the wiring, there is this little gizmo here. Uh, now, on your uh, electrical panel on the left-hand side, now many of you are wondering, well, what's this thing here? And this is called a terminating resistor. So, if you can imagine that a data goes along a wire and it goes along in a wave form, so like a sine wave, and it does this all the way along, you see? What happens is, just like when you throw a ball against a wall, you will get a rebound. The ball will bounce back. Uh, it may not be as strong, it may not be as powerful, but it will bounce back. That's exactly the same as in wave form. What happens is you get a wave, it'll get to the end, and then it will bounce back. You'll have what's called wave reflection. This re resistor, this terminating resistor, is put there so it stops that wave resistance. Uh, so this wave reflection. So why do we need to know this? Well, actually, this is really important because when you have error codes that come up on your motorcycle or the check engine light comes on, sometimes it might actually be down to a communication error between the different modules. And that could be down to this uh, degradation of the terminating resistor, which uh, impacts the quality of the message that is being sent through. So if you've got this interference along the line, then that actually can uh, affect the communication. Therefore, you're gonna get errors. Now that also may mask other errors that are occurring, or it may fire off other errors uh, but that may not be occurring, it's just that there's a communication error, okay? Now, if you check my other video about error codes, uh, you'll know all about this and the different types of error codes, but the communication error codes are U-codes. Okay, so DTC, or a Diagnostic Trouble Code, um, U, or DTC U0001, is a fault within the CAN bus circuit itself. 
Now, DTC U0011 means that there is a short circuit between the high and low uh, CAN bus uh, circuits. Now, essentially, you've got the two wire and the twinned wires. You've got a low uh, power, if you like, and you've got a higher power. And basically, two sets of data sent through along that. There might be a short between the two. That's why you got the error code. Now, the CAN bus system uh, was developed by Bosch from 1983 onwards. And then it got to SAE approval, the Society of Automotive Engineers. And it also got the ISO, the International Standardization Organization, approval as well. Many uh, motor vehicles started using the OBD system, which is their own language. Then they started, some vehicles started using CAN bus as well. Uh, motorcycles had a different evolutionary path in terms of onboard diagnostics. Uh, they're a little late to the party in many ways. Now what happened is that certain manufacturers have their own local area network, their own diagnostic system, uh, whilst others have adopted this CAN bus system. So Harley have adopted the CAN bus system. Some have adopted their own system, so for example Suzuki have their own unique system. Now, Harley uh, Softails and Taurus, uh, of course, have uh, this uh, onboard diagnostics uh, capability. They have the CAN bus system, uh, which allows for all the components to communicate with each other. Now, as I say, if you watch my uh, other video about the error codes and the diagnostics, you'll be able to see the error codes on the instrument module just up there uh, on top of the tank. Uh, now, on, on the soft tails, this is. Now, obviously, depending on your bike, you might have a slightly different setup, but it will be in the instrument module instrument cluster. You'll be able to access the diagnostics and also the error codes. Well, what does that do? Well, that enables you to scratch the surface, if you like. It's, it's almost like trying to wipe away at a dirty window so you can look inside a building or look inside a house. Whereas, you know, the uh, digital technician uh, system that your Harley technician will have at the dealership, that enables them to get really deep inside uh, the diagnostics and start really feeling their way around. They'll have the error codes, they'll have the clear codes, which we can have as well, uh, or the clear capability, uh, but they can also go a little bit deeper and actually delve deeper into the, the mapping, if you like, the, uh, the software. Now, how do they do that? Now, many of you may already know this, but it's by this little gizmo here, okay? And this is called the DLC-91. Oh, crikey, what's all that about? Now, the DLC, or the Data Link Connector, is a six-pin connector, and the uh, technicians will be able to hook up their digital technician uh, to, uh, to it to actually start interrogating the system externally. They'll be able to get all the error codes, be able to clear their codes, and as I say, they'll be able to delve uh, deep and see exactly what's wrong with your bike or what needs replacing as well. You may also know this uh, port because this is where you would uh, put your tuner, whether it's an FP3, uh, whether it's a Screaming Eagle, that's where you would connect it to. Now, if you've got something like an FP3 or any other kind of tuner, you may be able to have a hookup to a smartphone. You may be able to access error codes and have a certain diagnostics there. That kind of scratches the surface. Then you can look at mapping, so on and so forth. There is another system which you can have as well, and it's called the motor scan system. And basically the motor scan system uh, is an adapter that goes into the six pin connector here into the DLC, and it sends a Bluetooth connection to your phone. Then you can have all the uh, diagnostics and all the running information uh, on your phone. You can uh, have it in a cradle or in a bracket on your handlebars, and you can have that information as you're riding along. Now, many people ask me, it'd be really good to have engine temperature readings. Well, actually, with this motor scan, you can get that information. It'll be on your iPhone, you'll be riding along, you'll be able to see exactly what the engine temperature is, because all that information is actually dug out from the ECU or the ECM in our case. Now, this motor scan, I'll put a link in the description below for you, but to say, uh, I found it on Amazon and it's uh, $239 uh, from Diagnostica, the company that uh, make uh, the motor scan, it's $199. There are lots of good reviews about it. Lots of people are saying how fantastic it is. 
Uh, so you can uh, retune your bike with an FP3, for example. You don't have to have it connected once you've set your map for your upstaging, whatever it is. You can disconnect that, you can put in this adapter, and then you can have on running uh, information about your bike as you're riding along. So that's quite interesting. Whereas with the um, with the other, if you still got the tuner uh, attached, uh, you may not be able to have all the diagnostics uh, uh, ready to hand. So there you have it. That is the CAN bus system uh, or, or a communication system on your bike. It's actually a controller area network. That's what CAN stands for. I say de developed by Bosch, 1983 onwards. And it's evolved over the years for the motorcycle application as well. But essentially, this is where you can access that information, as well as the superfluous information on, on the instrument module, and you can access it all there. The Harley technicians will hook it up there as well. They go deep into the bike and see exactly what's wrong with it as well. Uh, you can get the error codes with a problem with the CAN bus system itself, and so those communication error codes as well. You can have uh, this uh, wave reflection, which is stopped by this terminating resistor. It's 120 ohms. Usually it's working about 60, 70 ohms a system, but this is at 120 to stop that rebound or that wave reflection to maintain the integrity of the uh, communication. You can have the adapter put in there, the motor scan, uh, which will give you real time information. You can leave your uh, tuner attached if you want, uh, let's say with an FP3, or you can just remap it and disconnect it and try and hide it all uh, behind the um, the electrical panel there anyway so that is the CAN bus system uh, hopefully that's explained it to you uh, I haven't gone too deep into that it's more giving you an insight and in how everything works it's uh, it just allows everything to communicate with each other so the brains uh, of your bike your ECM can actually control everything can gather information and it can share out information as well to all the different components on your bike. So it runs properly. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. Leave loads of comments below. Check out the website revelatoralf.com. Uh, sorry about all the background noises here. It's uh, playtime in the, in the park outside. Right, catch you again. Ta-da then.